It really does have a ministry. There's some people that have cut this part of the Bible out of their life. They don't ever go back there. It's like, well, that's just that's for them. And they excuse sin this way. But that was them back there. Like somehow God's altered. Well, if God has altered, if in the, per, in the death of Christ, God's altered the nature of God, then he can't be trusted. This is just the way it is. How do you know he's not going to change his mind in the end? How do you know? Because he's consistent. That's why you know. Paul asked <clears throat> this very salient question to the Romans. Remember in Romans 7? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? See, it's a good question. It's a good question. He says, God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. Now, if anyone tells you that they, that they know sin without the law, can that be right? Could it be that you just came across, to, well, I, I, what I think is a sin is different than what you think is sin. I heard, you ever heard this? Oh, I've heard this. Well, see, that's just for you because your conscience is weak, and so I can, you know, I can commit murder. Of course, they will never go as far as say that, will they? But I can do whatever I want to do, and it doesn't violate my conscience, so I figure I'm free to do it. Is that right? So I can, I can do what I can do, and you can do what you no, God's given us a standard. He gave us a standard. And now you look at that standard, and you judge yourself by that standard, and you'll come away every single time guilty. I can't do it. Why? Well, Paul's going to tell us why. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. What did it do? It revealed what was inside of him. It's going to reveal... now. You know, I'm not trying to harp on celebrate recovery, but it doesn't do this. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do it. But the law of Moses does it. It will reveal what's in your heart. It'll, it'll force it to come out. Paul found that the doing of the law was the real problem, not the law itself. It was the doing part. It was the fact that he couldn't do it that was the problem. It wasn't the law. That was the problem. But of course, as I've already said, if he had never tried to do it, then the law would have not had any ministration unto him at all. Paul would have gone on thinking he was all right. I'm headed for the Pharisee. I'm going to be, I'm looking maybe for the high priestship here. I'm on the right road here. I've, I've been schooled. I've been fine-tuned for this job. You see what happened? Paul took it serious is what happened. He took it serious. I mean, you got to give him credit for one thing. you got to be serious to be chasing after those Christians. See, he, he was serious. Now, he was seriously wrong, but he was still, he was committed so much so, he said, I did it in ignorance. We're living in a generation that the law has not been allowed to speak. It's been shut up. It's been like, it's, it, 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 if you speak the law, it's like, well, you're, you're trying to judge me? Well, you're very judgmental. Paul said, for I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Why? For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it slew me. Which, in other words, no man can manage sin. Yeah. You don't have the capacity to manage it. It'll deceive you every single time. Every single time you think you're doing okay, that you're boasting like the man who's taking his armor off. You're boasting like that when you're putting it on. You're, see, sin doesn't allow you to be up to the challenge. Sin is a, is a blinder, and it takes away your, your ability to be able to reason properly. But of course, Satan doesn't tell you this going into it. He doesn't tell you this. He, he says, you can come back anytime you want. You know that. See, Satan will whisper in your ear, you're not under the law of Moses anymore. It's okay. You're all right. You know how much God loved you. Well, all those things are true. Why, how can he use them against you? The minute you walk out that door, you've got absolutely no guarantee you can ever come back in it. Sin takes you away from God. See, if, you, if sin, everyone who sins, by the way, is the servant of sin, right? So if you're the servant of sin, then you, a servant doesn't get to do what he wants. A servant has to do what his master says. 
So when you sin, you become the servant of sin. Now what happens? Now you have to be delivered from him. This is not something you can do. This is something that Christ does. He saves people from their sins. We're living in a generation that has winked at the law. See, they've winked at it. They've looked at it. And just take it off the court. Get it off the courthouse lawn. I don't care if you believe it, but don't put it in front of my face. But this is what it was for. This was to put in front of people's face. You do this. God said do it. Well, well we, we, don't, we don't tell people about the law anymore. We just tell them about Christ. Okay. So how many people do you have that are convicted of sin? How, well, if, that, if, this is, if this is a valid ministration that God himself set in place, what right do I have to take it away? In a generation where the law is removed, it doesn't have any impact. In other words, it doesn't have the effect that God intended it to have on them personalities. So, okay, so you're saying, wait a minute, are you saying that we're justified by the law? This is what you get when you start opening your mouth and talking about the law. Are you saying, that? I just got done saying that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to him that believeth. See, Paul says, was then that which is good made death unto me? It's like, the, did God calculate it out somehow to where when he wrote this law, actually what he wanted to do was condemn the people. Is this what mo was motivated? He wanted to condemn them, so he come up with a reason that he could condemn them. He already had the reason to condemn them. God could have condemned at any point in time. So actually the work of the law was, was to deliver us from condemnation. We were already condemned. We just didn't know it. We were already sinners. We just didn't know it. You thought, well, we, we, we can, we're doing all right. I know we're, you know, I haven't murdered anyone. I haven't. I, I don't steal. And um, I, don't, I don't commit adultery. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm keeping the law pretty good. Well, to that person, I would say, you missed the first one, right? The law had to be done, and, 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 and Paul knew this. See, Paul took it serious. It had to be done absolutely right all the time, without one variation, not one time, not even once could you violate it in the smallest degree and get any mercy from the law. There was no mercy there. It was do and live. Well, see, this is... So why are you describing it like this? Because this is the reality. This, if you want to be under the law, which is there's only two ways to be righteous before God. That's where you do it by the works of the law. You keep the law. And then if you do it, then, then you'll be righteous. Or you can believe the record that God's given of his son. That Jesus has done all things that you could not do under the law of Moses. And then he'll impute righteousness to you. That's the only two Things we got to work with now. Of course, um, the law is seen properly. If you see the law for the, what God's declared it to be, it will lead you to Christ. Without fail. The law has never, ever one time been impotent in leading someone to Christ if they're serious. Never. Well, it's obviously because God gave the law to do that work. In other words, if unless people see this sinful condition, what do they really need a savior for? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that you brethren can see this, but what led you to Christ? Why did you repent? You saw your condition. You saw you were undone. Now, when you, when you know you're undone and you know there's nothing you can do to save yourself, then this is a good bit of information. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Amen. There's a means, there's a foundation for the end of the law 
for righteousness.